Joan. Hello. I'm Kelly. And I'm Adam. Welcome to I Love You But, where we talk about common relationship issues. And our advice on how to deal. While we drink some wine. While we vino. So tonight, I love you, but we need to talk about the KonMari method. What is the, who's KonMari and why is she a con? Exactly. And not a pro. Those are the right questions, man. So a little backstory, when Adam and I moved from Chicago to LA, right before we moved, we both read this book called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. What a weird title for a book. It's a long title for a book. It actually is. It's a very long title for a book. It's very it's wordy. Mouthful. It's a mouthful. mouthful, man. So this woman, she wrote this book and it's basically a way of not only tidying up your home but also like tidying up your life and it's a lifestyle that you adhere to it's very how do you say it uh aggressive it's all encompassing the other thing that KonMari found was that the people that started on this technique they also rid themselves of barriers that they had in their mind of achieving their dreams by tidying up their apartment they also tidied up their life. Oh, snap. That was me with a broom. It's sure, with the broom. I'm pretty sure it was you with the dance move. It's not just a sweep of the material things that you don't need because we attach feelings and memories to objects and it can be really difficult to get rid of objects that are blocking our personal growth. I used to hold on to so many birthday cards from parents and grandparents and friends. And when Adam and I first started dating, my mom sent him a birthday card and he was like, oh, this is nice. And then he threw it away. And I was <laughs> fucking floored. I was like, you can't throw away a birthday card. You can throw away a lot of birthday cards. They only have value for the moment that you feel excited when you open them. You know, I've just never felt that way. And it's something that I had to deal with when we were cleaning out before we moved across the country because we weren't going to take stuff that we didn't, didn't want. want or need. So the KonMari method is made up of six different points. You have to do it in a specific order. And I know that you're like, what? I'll just clean out my garage first and then I'll just clean out my closet and then I'll clean out the other closet and then I'll clean out my bed. No, guys, this is not how it works. No. And you gotta read the whole book. Mm -hmm. So watch this video and then read the whole book. She gets you. She's like, look, I know you're gonna think I'm fucking crazy for telling you to do it like this, but do it. And got to. By God, you better fucking trust her because she knows her shit. First, you have to commit to tidying up. You have to do it all at once. You can't be like, well, I'm gonna do it here at Christmas and then I'll do it at Easter and then I'll do it on summer break. No, you need to do all of it at once. And what she says, what is at once, because you know, people have different lives and different size homes and things like that. You have to do it within a six month period. And you know, we've had one bedroom since we've lived together. So we could do it in like we did it a in weekend. A, yeah, we did it pretty quick. But once you're committed to it, you just wanna, get through it. It feels great. It can be exhausting though. The second step, the second level of the KonMari method is to, so you commit yourself and then you imagine your ideal lifestyle, what you want to do and the things that are important to you and your ideal job and all the things that you want to do in your life and what your home should look like. Visualize. Yes. Visualize your goal. That's really what this one is. We've all heard that word. It's Visualize right. what you want your home to look like, what you want your life to look like. Really Put it out there. And to lead into number four, all of it is in your face. You're dealt with the magnitude of how much clothing you freaking own. So you'll do a group of things, like a group of clothes, books, whatever. You put all of your stuff in one place. So you're not like, oh, I'll go through the clothes in the closet and then the clothes in the front closet and then the clothes in the in storage. No, no, no. You put all that shit out there in Take your living out. room or in somewhere all at once. And you throw it all on the floor. Every nook and cranny has to be cleared of your clothing. If it goes on your body, it needs to go in the pile regardless of where you found it. Every scarf, every shoe, every sock, in addition to every shirt and pair of pants that you have, every single article of clothing. What she's saying here is that you need to finish discarding, so you need to choose what you want and what you don't want all at once before you start putting things away. And that can be a little frustrating. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it is shocking. It makes you realize how much you have. And follow the order that she tells you to tidy by. I can't stress this enough. She wants you to start with clothes for a reason. Clothes are a little bit easier to get rid of 
than some other things and you're like uh no that's it's difficult to get rid of clothes i know i know it's difficult to get rid of clothes clothes is difficult it only gets more difficult from there once you get to the end you're like oh i wish i was still on clothes and then you move on to books sometimes you have a good memory of a book or whatever but i still oh. feel like those are easy enough to get rid of mm -hmm. and then you move on to papers and then you move on to i guess what she calls like the miscellaneous stuff but it's all the tchotchkes all of the personal things the birthday cards <laughs> those things and you really have to go through each item individually and there's no certain amount that you should or should not keep there's right. no ideal amount of things that you should own, but it comes down to the sixth point. To ask yourself if this item brings you joy. It's just so beautiful that she makes you start with clothing because you just hold a piece of clothing and you think to yourself, well, I've had this for a while or not. You're either excited to get this out of the washer or you're not. It's a simple question. And you start to build this technique of understanding the things that that do bring you joy. Every single step falls into the next step, but ultimately at the end, you are surrounded only by items that bring you joy. And that's the change in your life. Mm -hmm. It's not the couch that you have, it's the couch that you're excited, you, that you're excited to own. That's what you're excited to own. It's the couch that you're excited to own. And if you are not excited to own that thing, if, if you are not excited to have that thing in your home, get rid of it. Out it goes. Because getting things that don't make you happy out of your apartment or out of your home is 10 times more important than making sure you have a second coffee table. I'm a person that attaches a lot of nostalgia to certain objects. I'm not saying I'm a hoarder, okay? You're not at all. I'm not a hoarder, but I will hold on to things longer than necessary because whenever I look at that thing, it reminds me of something or someone or a certain time. Those items are still very difficult for me to get rid of. And it took a while to have that feeling ingrained in me or that not even that feeling that like that process that the decision making process of mm -hmm. letting things go i mean it's a choice and it is something that you need to practice if you mm -hmm. don't practice letting things go you're not going to do it it is a muscle that you have to build up kanmari talks about doing this every month or two in her life which i think a lot of people may agree it's hard to find time for that moving's the perfect time for that mm -hmm. your identity changes and it's also a good time to realize how much your identity has changed you definitely have to have a moment with the things that you're departing with and go thank you for your service thank you for bringing me the joy that you did while you brought me joy you will now be let free yeah. fly little bird it's all weird and and uh, magic-y kind of when you talk about it like that the life-changing magic of tidying up it really is life-changing and it it is magical not only do we recommend this KonMari method but we also recommend reading the life-changing magic of tidying up because there are lots of additional tidbits in there that will help you with this process and if you're moving i highly recommend that you read this book i can't even tell you we got rid of at least half of our shit before at, we moved across the country at least give it a chance at least give it a chance with an open mind you have to have an open mind because she is very particular about some things and you're gonna be like i don't want to do it like that just do it try it out if it doesn't work i'm sure it will it but will. if it doesn't work, leave it alone, but it probably will, and then tell us what you think about it. If you've already read this book, if you've already done this method, let us know how it works for you. If it didn't work for you, I'd be very curious to know. Super curious. Yeah, we want to hear success stories and your I disagree with this entirely stories. Please tell us that. I would love to learn about your experience. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. Let us know if you're moving. Let us know if we can help you out with anything while we're moving. We'll drive our Priuses over and put a few boxes in the back and be like, oh, all right, and then cart them over for you. But have a beautiful rest of your evening.